Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. So this right here is telling us that in order to walk in the spirit, we absolutely do have to lay something down. We have to lay something down to walk in the spirit, and that thing is our flesh. And one thing we know about the flesh is that our flesh is something we're used to. It was the very thing that we were born with. We had our flesh before we even came out the mother's womb. So we're very, very used to this thing called flesh. Amen? Amen. And so with this scripture, it sounds like craziness. That's why the Bible says that in the, um, the word of God, the gospel, is foolishness yeah. and to, to people's minds, to those who, because when we step into carnality, this stuff becomes foolish to us, right? But that's why it's, it's saying, in order for it to not be foolish, you now have to step out of carnality and walk in the spirit, amen? Yeah. And so now that we've laid that foundation of walking in the spirit, we're going to talk about um, wisdom and things that... Uh, you need with walking in the spirit, okay? And so let's turn with me to 1 Kings 19. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces, the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Amen. And so I'm going to go to another verse. I'm going to read these different passages. Amen. And then I'm going to ask you a question pertaining to them. Now let's stay in 1 Kings, but let's go over to chapter 13. And this is one of my... Uh, one of my favorite uh, stories in the Bible, you might have heard me use it a couple times, um, but this story has so many angles that you can go by, and so I want to talk about this. So 1 Kings chapter 13, so I'm going to give you the backstory. story, amen. And so there was a man of God who God told um, to go somewhere, amen. He told him to go somewhere, and he told him don't eat at anybody's house, just go where I tell you to go, be obedient, amen. And so now we're coming to verse 15, and it says, that he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied to him. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. Hallelujah. And it came to pass, as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord. For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded, but camest back and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of, the, of which the Lord said, did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come upon the sepulchre of thy fathers. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread, and when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. We're going to stop right there, right in the middle of that verse, okay? And so now we're going to go, keep, keep that. Keep uh, 1 Kings chapter 3, keep it marked. But we're going to go over to Acts 16, verse 13. And it says, And on the Sabbath we went out of the city by a riverside, 
and where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake unto the woman which resorted thither. And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, and she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized in her household, and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. Verse 16 says, And it came to pass, as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. She came, the same followed Paul and us, and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And she did, and this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee, in the name of Jesus Christ, to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now I have a question for you guys. Were you listening to those three different sections we read? When we read 1 Kings chapter 19, the passage is there, 1 Kings chapter 13, and Acts 16. What do all of those passages have in common? There's a certain thing in there that they all have in common, and once again, this is not a trick question. So okay. it is obedience. Obedience, okay. They're offering, they're offering. So they were in their flesh, obedience. Anybody else? Okay. One thing they had in common was they had an opportunity to discern in the spirit. They had an opportunity to discern and assess the situation in the spirit. And see, that's why I specifically asked you guys, do you know what it is to truly walk in the spirit? Because if you know what it is to truly walk in the spirit, you can successfully walk in the spirit. Amen? Amen. Because so many people quote the scripture, walk in the spirit, we should not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but they don't know what it means. And so I'm here to teach you what this means so you can successfully do it. Amen? Amen. All right? Because the Bible says that we're supposed to uh, be sober and vigilant for our adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Amen? And so if we don't know how to utilize discernment while walking in the spirit, we're going to be devoured. Let's go back over to 1 Kings chapter 13, and let's read the rest of it. And remember, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary walketh around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. There's key words in there that I need you to pay attention to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we go back to 1 Kings chapter 13, and we left off in the middle of verse 24. Verse 24, I'm going to start it off, and it says, And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way, and the donkey stood by it, the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, when men passed by, they saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. All right. And so, yeah, he had a chance to be obedient. He had a chance to choose disobedience as well. But he also had the perfect opportunity to discern in the spirit. Because what the man told him was that, I'm a prophet just like you are. He had a perfect opportunity while he was on his, remember, he was on his mission from the Lord. And everyone in this room was on a mission from the Lord, right? Amen. Okay. So he was sent on a mission from the Lord and he was given clear instructions. He had an opportunity to discern in the spirit. And yet, a prophet came to him and said, well, I'm a prophet just like you are. He said, I'm a prophet just like you are. So come and do what I'm telling you to do now. Which meant to disobey God. And so we see here that there was a lack of discernment. Mm -hmm. And why, why I liken the scriptures together, um, the devil comes in like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour, was because, like I said before, if you aren't utilizing your discernment when you're walking in the spirit, he's going to what? The lion is going to come and devour you. Mm -hmm. And in this scripture, his lack of discernment got him what? Devoured by a lion. Mm -hmm. Amen? And then we see in the other scriptures, they utilized discernment. But how did they utilize discernment? We'll get to that in a moment. We're always on mission. 
This man of God was on a mission. And he was deterred. He was deterred because of lack of discernment, all right? And we can easily be deterred and distracted or even devoured by lack of discernment. When on your mission, amen? amen. Hallelujah. And so that's why the scripture says, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary, the devil, roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So I have another question. Can you discern the enemy when he's in your midst? Can you discern what's of God? Because remember, we're not going based off of what looks like God and what sounds like God. All right? That, that, see, that's, 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 that's church. That's playing church. Amen. When we go based off of, oh, this sounds like God. Oh, that looks holy. Oh, this looks sanctified. This Amen. looks right. That's playing church. That's not actually moving and walking in the spirit. Amen. Because when we do things that just, oh, it looks and it sounds like God, now we're walking in the flesh and obeying the lust of the flesh and not walking in the spirit. Mm -hmm. Because it looks like, it sounds like. Oh, let's go back over to 1 Kings chapter 19 when we were dealing with Elijah. Amen. Hallelujah. I want y'all to stay over there and mark that, right? Here's a key thing. It says, a strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, a still small voice. But Shalana, doesn't Deuteronomy 4 and Hebrews 12, 29 say that God is a consuming fire? But he wasn't in the fire. Well, here. Acts 2 and 2 say that the Holy Ghost came in like a mighty rushing wind, but it wasn't in the wind. Here. Doesn't Haggai 2 and 6 say, oh, there will come a time where I will shake the heavens and shake the earth, but it wasn't in the earthquake. He was in something that most people weren't looking for, the still small voice. And now I'm not saying that in order to discern God, you have to listen for some still small voice. And if it's loud, it's not God. But what I'm telling you is that in order to figure out what's God, you have to discern and be walking in the spirit. Because it was the spirit that told Elijah that God was not in the fire when Elijah knew that God was a consuming fire. It was the Spirit of God that told Elijah that God was not in the wind when everybody back then knew that the Lord would come and destroy things by wind and do all types of stuff. It was the Spirit of God and discernment that told Elijah that God was not in the earthquake. Amen? Amen. When God said, once again, I'm going to come and shake the heavens and shake the earth. She said, what? Say it loud. These men are the servants of the Most High God which show unto us the way of salvation. These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. That's flattery. That's flattery. And guess what it also is? It's truth. Those men were the servants of the Most High God, who are showing those people the way of salvation. But guess what? Paul didn't get flattered. He didn't get flattered. He discerned, he assessed, and he said, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Can you discern when you're dealing with a demon yeah. or when you're dealing with someone who, who is just a, your partnership? Because so many people, see, this is why ministries fall. Because people come into agreement with demons. And so people, they're hearing these things. Listen, it was a 100% truth. But Paul, and Paul could have entered into flattery. Yes, that's us. Servants of the Most High God, we're coming to, to show you the way of salvation. Yes, yes, yes. Let me preach to you. He cast the demon out. Basically, what he did, he cast the principality off of that, off of that city that caused that city to make money. Listen, we're talking about some power and authority when you can discern what looks true and call it false. And you be so much in the spirit that you can take down principalities over cities and regions. But yes. when you're not discerning, guess what? The principality is going to take you down. Mm -hmm. Yes, true. It's going to take you down. Mm -hmm. And see, I don't want the devil to come in and infiltrate.
frustrate my brothers and sisters. And so when those things come about, you have to discern and understand, is he in the earthquake? Is he in the wind? Is he in the fire? I know we be, hallelujah, God, the fire of God, the fire. I know we do it. We, I know, I know. It's real, too. It's real. It's real. But if he ain't in the wind today, he ain't in the wind. He ain't in the fire today. He ain't in the fire. See, that's why you see, and I don't do one thing where people want you to scream and hoop and holler. No, I do that when God say do. Because he can be in that. But if he's not in that today, that's not what we'll do today. But if he's in that today, if he's in that today, I will do that. You got a mandate from God to walk in the spirit like never before in this season. Amen. I'm talking about Amen. walking in the spirit so you don't fulfill the lust of life. Yes. So you don't get so flattered by the tricks and traps of the enemy. What sounds good, what looks good, what sounds like God. I don't care what Amen. sounds like God. If it ain't him, That's right. it ain't for me. That's right. That's right. Listen, this is real. This is Jesus. real talk. Hallelujah. If it ain't him, we need to be tight in the spirit. But what about the unity in the spirit? Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And then when he said, when he prayed for all of us, he said, I wish that they would all be one with you as I am one. Hallelujah. Now we got to focus on that becoming one with the Holy Ghost so that we're not missing beat. I love the Apostle Paul. He didn't miss a beat. He didn't miss a beat. He did not miss a beat. He did not, a, not miss a beat. I'm not saying you don't make mistakes. You are a human being. Human beings have tendencies to make mistakes. But I'm talking about ignorance. We don't have a pass for ignorance. We have a pass for mistakes. <clears throat> See, I'm getting real, y'all. We don't have a pass for ignorance. We are supposed to know what God is requiring of us. We're supposed to know what it takes to do the specific thing that God is calling us to do. Amen. All right? Jesus. We have to know. God is not going to send you out on a mission and not give you instruction or discernment or wisdom. Amen? God does not set us mm -hmm. up to fail, but our flesh does. We're not called to fail in the mission of God. We're not called to fail in our households and fail our family. We're not called to fail our children. We're not called to fail at jobs. We're not called to fail at businesses. Amen. But we're called to be so keen in the spirit that we can master everything that God has called us to do, including your households, including your children, including Amen. your businesses. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, many Christians are so undiscerning in every area of their life, and then they blame it on the fact of, I'm just being a Christian, I'm just trusting God, I'm just waiting on God. And that's a lie from the devil. When we, when we, we draw back, and, and we use a lack of discernment in these situations, and in our life, we, we see nothing. And we see everything come to shambles. So now, you went to do ministry, the enemy bombarded you this, bombarded you that, you didn't even get to do what you was supposed to be doing. Now you feel like this. Now you didn't get to do this. A uh, commotion cause was caused. This I say then. Walk in the spirit. And you will not obey.